Got a Honda in the shop. It's topped off with coolant, but yet it's still overheating. What could it be? I don't know. Let's go find out, and you tell me. ECT sitting at 221 degrees. And we come over here. Looks like, yeah, we, we got at least 210, 215 right in this area. So we got over here 130 down here by the thermostat, 159. 156. What do you think it could be? Why is this thing overheating? All right, vehicle's been running for about 30 minutes and it is fixed. You can hear both fans coming on. You can see them right there. Let's look at what our ECT looks like. It was right at about 203. It'll drop down to 195 because the fans just came on and it's been doing that consistently. Now before you let this vehicle idle for any length of time, it would have immediately gotten up to about 2.30 on that ECT, anywhere between 2.20 and 2.30. And let's look around here. You can see this is showing about 198, 197, so pretty close to our ECT temperature. Over here, 188. Yeah, 184, 188, right in there. These things aren't perfectly accurate, but they're, they're good for just quick check. And looks like we're 189, 190, 192 right in there, over there. So you can see the temperatures are much more even than they were before. So now, what do you guys think happened? Now, before you answer, I'll tell you what I knew. I knew what the owner complained of, that the vehicle was getting too hot. You know, normally on a normal operating Honda, it'll be a little bit below halfway on the gauge. This one at times was going to go above the gauge like it was going to hot. It didn't go all the way to hot, but it was heading that direction. So that's why they brought it to me to check out. Now, I took it for a test drive and I had the scan tool hooked up and just sitting at an idle, just turning it on and really fast, it, it immediately got up to about 220, a little over 220 degrees without any trouble. And then um, as I was driving it right in town, I noticed that it was getting up to about 230 degrees. And I had the AC running and the fans were coming on with the AC on. But then if I turned the AC off, the fans were not coming on. And so I got on the highway, drove it on the highway at about 65 for a while. And that temperature went from about 225, 230, right down to about 195. And it stayed at 195 until I got off the highway. As soon as I got off the highway and got off the exit, came to a stop, I hit the light and I waited there. Boom, it was up to 220 or so in no time. And I started driving and it stayed about 225. Um, and so until I got back home. And then I did the temperature gun and showed you on the scan tool what I was seeing and that's what I asked, okay, what do you think the problem is? So now you know everything that I knew, what do you guys think that the problem was and what was the fix? All right, now here's the quiz part. I want you to pause the video, leave a comment down below and tell me what you think the issue on this vehicle is and then we'll come back and see what the answer is. And no cheating, I'll know if you're cheating. Now, in order to come to a conclusion and, and figure out what's going on, we gotta kinda think logically. Now, if this thing was overheating when we got it on the highway, just driving it, you know, for an extended time on the highway, it starts to overheat, but it's fine during, or driving in town, that's usually an indication of a blown head gasket. Now, we had the exact opposite, so we're not worried about a blown head gasket. Now, we also have to think, all right, is our ECT reporting correctly? Is that coolant temperature really, you know, 230 degrees or more? Or is it skewed? Is there an issue with that ECT? Or is there a pocket of air next to that ECT? So we got to kind of look at that and you typically have to look on a scan tool and you know from when it's cold to when it warms up we want to see do we have dropouts, glitches, anything like that. I didn't see anything like that although I mean it did get warm pretty fast it did not have dropouts or glitches or anything like that. Um, if there's a pocket of air there it'll usually I mean like 
within a couple minutes just bang just go all the way to the H um, and so I didn't see that so you know just quickly looking at the scan tool it didn't appear that our, there was anything wrong with our ECT it seemed like it was working correctly now that doesn't mean it's not skewed and it could be working but it's just you know not reporting correctly but it seemed like it was okay um, and then you know we have to think okay is it actually overheating and so that's where the temperature gun helps us out to figure out okay is it actually overheating or is that coolant temperature sensor lying to us and it's not really overheating um, another thing we have to think about you know in this case it was overheating in town and at an idle sitting still and so typically that's where our fans are going to help kick kick on and help keep keep things cool when we're not moving like on the highway and things like that so we have to think about okay do our fans work and whatever is supposed to turn the fans on is it working in this case there's a switch down there at the bottom of the radiator some vehicles have a second um, coolant temp sensor that tells the computer when to turn it turn the fans on and so I you know I looked and saw that okay when I turn the AC on these both work but I noticed they would cycle on and off you know like normal but I noticed that even though it said 230 on the scan tool it wasn't turning our fans on when I turn that AC off our fans were staying off and so that's a clue okay is there a problem with our switch I know the fans were working but is there a problem with our switch or our wiring and that's where you know I, I took the temp gun and I could see okay over here the temperature near our ECT was pretty close to what we were reading on a scan tool so that seems like it's pretty accurate and then over here it seemed like things were much cooler you know our the end of our hoses and and so I was thinking you know what it seems like we are not circulating our coolant so it's not getting to 200 degrees down there so it's not turning our fans on it seems like all the heat is staying over here and so what can cause our coolant to not circulate well a restriction in the system um, a bad thermostat or a bad water pump and so you know then we gotta gotta take in all of our data and be like okay what's going on now I just worked on this vehicle I put this um, radiator in just a couple months ago and I wanted to put a new thermostat in but uh, you know due to the uh, just the cost and try to keep savings down we didn't uh, end up putting in a new thermostat but I would have liked to but I knew that you know then when I tested the system that the coolant seemed to be flowing fine so I, I didn't think you know in just a couple months we had some kind of restriction that's blocking something in um, in our cooling system but we have to think okay is the water pump did it go out and it's not circulating coolant or is there a problem with our thermostat not allowing the coolant to flow now what's the most common issue a bad thermostat and so that's where my head was thinking okay we've kind of eliminated everything else what was going on in our situation well we were pretty consistent when we got on the highway what dropped down to 195 but when we stopped or you know slowed down in traffic we were up to 220 to 230 and so it seemed like coolant was flowing um, and then when we got to higher speeds and higher RPMs maybe we had a little more coolant flowing which is why our temperatures went down so I was less suspicious of a of a water pump and focused all my attention on the thermostat there now you know these the thermostat is part of the housing in fact Where's the old one? I'll find the old one. So here it is. So here was the problem. I know that was a lot of words to say it was a bad thermostat, but it could have been a lot of things. And if you guess wrong, it can get expensive. But most likely this thermostat was stuck in one position, so it was allowing a little bit of coolant to go through, but not, not enough to where it was supposed to, so it could cool. And so replacing this, as I showed you, fixed the vehicle, but you know it could have been several other things my first inclination when I saw that the fans weren't coming on was maybe there was a problem with that switch but once I took the temperature gun out and I saw that this area was still cool and I was like well that's the reason why those fans are not coming on so in the end a little bit of logical de um, reasoning and deduction we came up with uh, you know that it was a bad thermostat put a brand new Honda thermostat in there and we're good to go this is an area where I really don't like to go aftermarket I did end up getting a Duralast just in case because I wanted to get this car fixed today but luckily my parts guy had an actual Honda one so we're not going to use that that's going to go back 
Um, but yeah, I definitely on the cooling system, especially thermostats, ECTs, um, cooling fan switches, I like to go. Original equipment, just they work a lot better. The aftermarket stuff, uh, you can create more problems than you actually fix. You know, aftermarket radiators and fans, I haven't had a problem with, but when it comes to thermostats and switches and uh, ECTs, I like to go Honda. Okay, with the vehicle fully warmed up, so it was cycling between 203 and 195 when our fans would kick on, I went ahead and turned on the AC, so that's gonna activate our fans most of the time. They might cycle on and off a little bit, but they'll be on for the most part. And we can see it dropped it down to about 186, and so that's what I wanna see. So this is another good indication that we have a fix because this is a properly, properly operating system. This is what we should see with those fans on all the time. That should definitely drop our temperature down. All right, I'm out on a test drive running around in traffic and it's about 105 out today. So definitely a great test for this vehicle. If we look at our temperature gauge, we can see we're exactly where we should be on a fully warmed up Honda. So that's good. If we look over here at our ECT, we're sitting at 190. I do have the AC on because it's so hot, but this is well within the range of uh, operating temperature where we should be under these conditions with as hot as it is out, plus having the AC on running those fans. So this definitely confirms that we fixed this vehicle. Well, that's it for this one. Why did I do the video this style? Well, I wanted you guys to think about it. What if you were in this situation? What would you do? What would you think of? What maybe part would you throw at it? And so, you know, I get a lot of comments on this channel specific to my Honda's overheating. And that's why I did this video. I, you know, if your Honda's overheating, let's think about it critically and see if we can come to a conclusion of why it's doing it. All right. And so hopefully in that aspect, the video helped you out. And as always, if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.